At 145 pounds, Mark Bybee of Burbank St. Lawrence against Sandberg High School's Ben Gerties. These two know each other very, very well, Rob Sherrill. Bybee's in the black, Gerties in the gold. And here we go. This is the match that uh, everybody's been waiting for. And a fast move by Bybee there. So far, no score. Just underway. Nice counter by Bybee to get out of uh, what looked like a pretty good shot by uh, Ben Gerties on that duck under. One of the things that Bybee always has to watch out for is he's a little bit of, sl of a slow starter in matches. He gives up the first takedown a lot, but he hasn't done it yet. Nice counter with Gertie's first shot of the match. Scoreless here, a minute 20 to go. That is Ben Gertie's. His coach is Mike Pohl. Started with him at Providence and then moved over to Sandberg when Poles came over. That was a couple of years ago. Third at 112 and 91. Fifth at 125 and 92. And third at 130 and 93 for Ben Gerties. Meanwhile, Bybee, like Gerties, a senior. Two of his four losses have come to Ben Gerties. But Bybee got the big one in the sectional, pinning Ben Gerties. As outstanding as these two wrestlers have been throughout their careers, it's amazing that neither of them has been to the state finals since their freshman year. Bybee was second his freshman year, and Ben Gerties has never been to the finals. And there is again a no score, but uh, but a very exciting counter by by Bybee to get out of trouble. Final 20 seconds here of period number one. Neither wrestler has scored. Gerties in the gold. Bybee in the black. Tom Hennef is the lead referee, along with Pete Ross. And we are through two minutes, and we are scoreless. There's Mark Bybee, we told you, four defeats out of 45 matches. Ben Gerties, 38 and 1, the only loss coming to Mark Bybee. Well, as you see here as they start the second period, this is strength against strength. Mark Bybee, a great mat wrestler. Ben Gerties, very good at getting off the bottom. He can stand up very quickly. He's got incredible hand strength. And he is able to break the hands with the best of them. So we'll see who wins this confrontation right here. We had a false start call to start the second period. Now they're underway. Gertie's on the bottom. Bybee on top. Gertie's trying to move on Bybee there, but Bybee. against Bybee underneath the body and a point for Gerties. Well, if you had to ask me how the scoring in this match would get started, I would not have guessed Locked Hands. Report to the award area. 140 pound award winners, please report at this time to the awards area. Now Gerties with the stand up, but couldn't break the hands. Keep turning, Wick. Keep turning. A minute 30 to go, period two. Bybee's coach on, telling him to keep Gertie's on the mat if he can. Hold keep him on the mat, and so far Bybee's doing that. Even though he's keeping him on the mat, he'd really have to bring him on an awful lot farther to get any near fall situation out of it. It's kind of a long time to let him wrestle on the edge. But the key to getting out in that kind of a situation is to break the hand control of your opponent. And that's why Ben Gerties is so good at it because he has good hand strength. But again, Bybee is tough on the mat as he is. And he's got that leg in. And now trying to turn him, it's been very difficult for him. Under a minute to go in period two. Still one nothing the score. With Gerties having that point. 
Ivy still with the leg hooked. And now a stall warning against Gerties on the bottom. Tom Hennep wants him to get that head up off the mat and try and improve. Call for the trainer here, an injury timeout situation. Looks like Gerties has the problem. Maybe a cramp. And, uh, Tom Hennep says start the clock, and that's what they're doing. The injury clock is running on Gerties, and it looks like that uh, either the right knee or the right calf. Huh? You hope it's just a cramp. In addition to being good offensive wrestlers. These two guys are both great defensive wrestlers. They're great counter wrestlers and they both have uh, the capability to generate a lot of offense, but they both have the generate the capability to stop the other guy's offense and that's why we haven't seen much scoring. Back to action with 20 seconds, 25 seconds to go here in the second period. Bybee again on top. Gerties remains on the bottom trying to escape. And Bybee holding on. Bybee's really hit, uh, not allowed Ben to get much in the way of the stand-up and try to break the hands. And now a stalemate. With six seconds left in the second period. He's kept the legs in. He's kept them controlled on the mat. And Ben Gerties has been warned for stalling on the bottom in this period. And once again, we uh, get a false start call. Against Gerties, I believe, on the bottom. He really never let Bybee get set. That's two, I believe, on Ben. So he's got to be careful. Seconds as Bybee can't finish the move, and we are through four minutes. And again, uh, it's still a one-nothing match. And you have a feeling uh, you know all that's prelude because these last two minutes are going to be for everything. The fourth time these two wrestlers have met, Gerties has won two of the three, but Bybee has won the biggest one so far with a pin in the sectional. Both are seniors. It'll be interesting to see what Ben tries to do on the mat here. Bybee rode him out in the second period. And now it looks like a reversal. Not yet. Gertie still has the leg. But now two with points. the hip over hip, it's two points. And now we'll get to see if, if Ben Gertie's can get out again. Gerties asks for more injury time on the bottom. You saw him put his hand up signaling the official. And he does not look in good shape right here. And the referee is starting the clock on uh, Ben Gerties. I can't see it from here, but he's down about his uh, last minute. And again, it's that right calf. You don't want to give Bybee a rest in this situation. Clock stops with 31 seconds left on the injury timeout for Gertie. Is a minute 26 left in regulation of the match. And Mark Bybee now with a two to one lead. Again, will assume the top position. Gurry's trying to stand up. Now he wants to try a sit out. He's just not been able to break the hand control. And that's really the key to being able to stand up and get out. Now he has to stand up. And again, Bobby brings it back down. We'll talk about a match that has been a lot less than people had hoped, at least to this point. 55 seconds to go, and Mark Bybee leading 2-1 to one over Ben Gerties. And Gerties twice has had to take considerable time for a right leg problem. 
45 seconds to go, and if Gertie's is going to go, he'd better go soon. Again, a stall. And now a stalling call against Bybee. He's been tough on top, but he really hasn't done much in as real far as really trying to get a turn here. The game plan is obviously to try to win this match on the mat, and now he's got a power half in trying to turn on that. 30 seconds to go. Now Gertie slips the leg, and he's got a step over, but he has still hasn't broken the hands. Bobby and Black still leading two to one. 20 seconds. Gertie's could get his head out. He's he got it. Reversal, and he's got it. Gertie's with a 3-2 edge now with 15 seconds to go. Gertie's needed the points. He got him. Now Bybee with 11 seconds, 9 seconds. Sees the clock off the mat. 5 seconds to go. And boy, did this match turn quickly. 5 seconds. You see it right there. Mark Bybee's game plan almost worked. He controlled this match down on the on the mat. He slowed down the pace of the match, but he he held him down for two minutes, but he couldn't hold him down for four. One second. And, and let's see, do they give it to him? Time has expired. Time has expired. And everybody's holding their collective breaths. There is a locked hands call at the buzzer, and we're going to go to overtime. Well, everybody seemed to be in suspended animation right there when Gertie's was called for locked hands, Rob. I couldn't even see it. At the buzzer, when Bybee tried to hit the switch, he put Gertie's down on his hip, and Gertie's just had to hold on any way he could to avoid giving up the reversal. And now Gertie's in on the single leg. The thing about these two minutes is that it's wrestled on the feet, and that's to Gertie's advantage. And now Bybee's got the figure four. Gertie's wants to come out the back door and try to get the takedown. And it's a stalemate. Well, Bybee's coaches were kind of upset at that. They were hoping their man could hold on, but now we go back to the neutral position. We're still tied, a minute 35 to go. Ben right. needs to set up a really good takedown shot here, and he tried to duck under there. Last second point. Brought this match to a tie. The point from Mark Bybee after a reversal with five seconds to go gave Gertie's the edge. So for what the drama was lacking in the first five minutes of change, we've got it now. It is a pin for Bybee. Yes, it is. Gertie's had the front headlock. He tried to step underneath, and Gertie and Bybee just collapsed on him and took him right to his back. What an incredible move to end this match. The fall in overtime for Mark Bybee, a most unpredictable match, ends unpredictably with the fall. And Mark Bybee has won it. He's your champ in Class A at 145 pounds, and they'll be talking about this one for a while. Mark Bybee, Class AA champ at 145. Looking at some other action in Class A at 145 pounds, Mike Greenfield of Belleville Althoff with a 4-3 decision over Brian Ajo of uh, Tri-City Buffalo to take that championship. But let's go back to that finish in the double-A, Rob, and explain exactly what's going on here in the overtime. Birdies with the front headlock, very high-risk move to try and step underneath, and Bybee just grabbed, just grabbed the double as a counter and just hipped right into him and took Gertie's to his own back for the takedown. So Ben Gertie's, who had won the first two matches of these two, loses the last two, including the big one. Mark Bybee gets the state championship, Class AA, 145. More coming up next.